Michael Johns is a former White House speechwriter. He's also co-founder of the U.S. Tea Party movement. He joins us live from Philadelphia. Michael, thanks so much for being with us. It is still hard to determine, you know, if Trump is a liability or an asset for your Republican Party. I mean, after what you saw yesterday, where do you stand? I think the president's undeniably been an asset both to the country and to the party. He's expanded the voter base. He had three incredibly successful years before the pandemic uh, hit the country. Um, I think it's probably a gross exaggeration to describe yesterday as a coup attempt or as sedition. I mean, this was a fraction of a very, very large uh, rally that really essentially occupied um, uh, Capitol Hill. And ultimately, when they were, you know, inst instructed to leave, they did. There was one fatality. It was, a, you know, an incident of a police shooting. It seems itself really the major lingering question of whether lethal force was justified and warranted in that case. Uh, it is unfortunate, something I would certainly would have discouraged, and I, and I know many think, many did. If you look at what the president, his remarks yesterday, I would disagree that there was any uh, suggestion on his part to, uh, you know, invoke anything violent or illegal. There was n not even anything inferred there. Okay. Um, in fact, you can use the word peacefully in describing um on that, proposed. though, Michael, though, I mean, even if you don't feel, you know, he instigated uh, these actions, the, you know, the, the Department of Homeland Security is now at least calling on him to condemn uh, his supporters for those actions. Uh, it looks like he's not going to do that. And I mean, the, the hypocrisy, some would say, is that he says he is the president of law and order. What happened yesterday was not law and order. So why isn't he condemning those actions? Well, I, I, he actually did. He came out in at the White House, uh, both with a statement and with video, urging people to return uh, home and to leave the streets and to honor the 6 p.m. curfew that was put in place. So, you know, in the eyes of some, and unfortunately, I think there's just like no right this president can do. We're having um, some microphones. And really. Uh, really Michael, if you can hear me, I'm not sure. We, we've got some audio issues. I, I, I wanted to stop you. I'm sorry in a sec, because he didn't condemn their actions. He simply said, okay, stand back. Let's do this peacefully. He still said you are special people and we love you after what they'd done. That, that's not condemning those actions. Well, I, and I think the perspective is that the motivating force here was not anything the president said in those remarks yesterday. In fact, in the eyes of some, they were uh, not pointed enough. Uh, the, the emotional reaction is a product of 47% of the country that feels uh, that there was uh, fraud. And that fraud is not subjective. It's it's documented in 5,000 affidavits that uh, are waiting to be assessed, that have been validated by a number of state legislatures. And as you saw, even in the votes yesterday in Congress, uh, you know, well over 100 members between You can both say bodies. they've been validated by the legislatures, but they've been rejected entirely outright by right. the judiciary. Yeah, the, it, it really was probably almost uh, le inappropriate to take those before the court. It's important to emphasize that the rejection of it by the court was not a rejection of the evidence or a rejection of the allegations, but a rejection on the venue. And they were so they were generally issues of legal standing um, on which they were not uh, heard ultimately from a constitutional standpoint, the state legislature is responsible for the allocation of electors uh, to Congress, and then Congress is uh, charged with the act of mm -hmm. what they what proceeded yesterday in assessing those electors and accepting or or challenging right. them. They were, they were challenged um, by members of elected members of Congress and uh, were not accepted. Uh, Biden was. Uh, you know, put in okay. as, as Michael. I gotta uh, say, what concerns me about what you're what you're talking about here is that it means it's really not over. I spoke to another Trump supporter who who agreed that what we saw yesterday, people might have been hoping that was the culmination of the rejection of the election results. But then, from what I'm hearing from you, is that it's, it really is not over because these thousands of supporters feel that they were wronged by the system, and they're not going to let it go. So are we going to see more potentially violent action? 
Yeah, I don't. I don't believe you will. I certainly would discourage anyone from that. I don't think it's uh, uh, it's certainly destructive to the country, and it's not helpful to the even to that cause. And that was a message that many of us, me included, put out even before yesterday. But let me just say, the resolution of the it that you describe is, yeah, I mean, you have these major allegations in six key states that really have not been addressed to satisfaction. And so if you look at the debate that's going on, it's it's a very unusual debate because it's a debate with individuals who have reviewed really specific allegations in granular detail, uh, have reviewed a you know fairly detailed report put out by a senior White House official on this and, and by an attorney, state attorney general, uh, who's detailed it, and those who say, well, there just simply was no no um, uh, fraud. I think what would be hugely constructive from those who believe that Biden did receive the 270 electoral college votes would be to put together their own report addressing the specific allegations, because that's what's completely lacking. It's been lacking in the debate. It was lacking in the congressional uh, dialogue yesterday. And I think it's leaving a large percentage of the country feeling that their concerns about these allegations are not take, being taken seriously, not being addressed, not being remedied. And, um, you know, those, okay. those allegations, I think that's what really brings a final closure. And it's also positive, I think, for Biden. I don't think he wants to take office with a cloud of doubt hanging over his head with nearly half the country questioning. I can't really election. speak for Biden, but I mean, so I think some would comfortably say that he has, he feels like he has to let this go. There is just no convincing the people who believe that the U.S. No, election not, system is ridden with fraud and can't be trusted. There's no way to convince them. And I mean, you, even if they, it is proven somehow. They're not attempting to. That's, that's the problem. And that's the point I'm trying to make. There's not an, any attempt to convince uh, those in the, and by those, I mean, these are elected officials. These are individuals who witnessed things, who signed affidavits. They're not overtly partisan individuals. They have no stake in misrepresenting okay. facts. Uh, you know what? They're not being countered with, with, uh, details. So I think Got you're it. right about that. Mike, I, I, we just have a minute left and I really needed to ask you one final question because this is really disturbing so many Americans and we keep hearing comments about it. We're seeing these pictures, you know, of those fully armed forces that, you know, were guarding the Capitol when we had Black Lives Matter protesters out there in the same place just a few months ago. Compare that mm -hmm. to Wednesday when there was absolutely just no security. Um, why yeah. that discrepancy? Why was there so much for Black Lives Matter and then nothing when this rally was announced and planned? Well, I think in the case of uh, the, these were earlier in the summer there were undeniably street riots. I don't think there was any indication yesterday. And really, when you look at what actually was occurred, it, it doesn't look like there was a real conscious collective effort to inflict damage. It was more a, a point of statement. Um, but I do, I think that's a reasonable point and one that should be addressed is, you, you know, you have Congress in session and an important deliberation. Uh, I've worked in Congress. I've worked in the White House. It, it seemed, um, insufficiently guarded and apparently there's even some video of, of guards letting people in so i think that is a question that has to be addressed is you know why was there insufficient protection of okay. a major governmental building at such a sensitive time okay fair enough michael johns thanks so much for taking the time to speak to us we we do appreciate it